Hi, I'm Rachel Romeliotis, a senior editor at O'Reilly Media. I'm with Brian Lonsdorf, CTO of Loop Recur. Thank you for joining me. No problem. So you are a functional programming guy. Trying to be. And yes, <laughs> and, and also work with JavaScript. How did that happen? Um, well, you know, uh, I started out object oriented for like six years, seven years, and I was doing Ruby and PHP and all that stuff, and I read a lot of Fowler and Bob Martin, and I was mm -hmm. really into it. But I wanted to try JavaScript because everybody was doing JavaScript. Sure. And I felt like functional was more natural, uh, like the more natural fit, because um, you know, if you have to choose between object oriented or functional, I mean, it gives you both kind of sides. And they both have a different um, kind of perspective in JavaScript, right? Because mm -hmm. if you're doing object oriented, you got to kind of make classes, you got to worry about this, you got to worry about like, you know, just different quirks that JavaScript gives you. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing functional, you just kind of sidestep the whole this issue and you mm -hmm. get first class functions. So I got really into that. And then, um, you know, I ended up doing as far as I could possibly go with it. Right. So I were doing like point free Haskell style JavaScript wow. for fun. So, so you, w would you say it's more of a choice of how you like to program rather than more powerful or? I think there's benefits to both. Um, Scala has a good mindset where you have like architecture is really great with object oriented, mm -hmm. but pure functions are amazing. I mean, like I couldn't go back if I didn't have pure functions. I wouldn't just go, you know. So the the whole point is, um, if you write a method on an object, mm -hmm. you tie that you know functionality to its scope or its its environment right. and its data it's working on. If you have a pure function, it's just portable. And so we like to get as many portable things as possible, so right. just gravitate towards that. So I know that you talk about um, design patterns. Sure. Can you tell me a couple of those, maybe to entice some people to your side? Sure, <laughs> sure. OK. Um, yeah, I guess the best one to talk about is the functor pattern, which is um, it's really just the map function. And it works on arrays, but it also works on other things like promises and streams. Um, and really what it is, is if you call dot map on your object, um, if you call it on an array, it's going to iterate over the array, right? And mm -hmm. run a function on every element in there. But let's say you have an object with one property. And whenever you call dot map on that object, it just runs the function on its property. Mm -hmm. But now you have control over the application of that function on its property. So let's say uh, in the example of maybe, um, a maybe object with one property would just do a null check. And it'll say, I'll maybe run it or I maybe won't, based on if my property is there or not. Mm -hmm. And you can do the same with promises. Uh, you can define map as just dot then uh, mm -hmm. for promises. And so it runs it when it gets there. And so the whole pattern is run our function on our property you know, in this certain kind of context. And array, it's uh, many, so right. it's iteration. A lot of people associate mat, map with that. Right. Um, but that's what a functor is. There's also laws. I don't want to <laughs> make people angry. There's definitely laws that you have to follow okay. um, to make sure that it's indeed a functor and you're not breaking uh, the intuition for other people mm -hmm. who expect it. Would you say that knowing how to program in different styles, you know, object oriented and functional, helped you become a better programmer or at least understand the oh, concepts? Um, uh, it's, uh, to quote Twitter, <laughs> of course. the other day someone said, uh, tweeted, and it got like a million retweets, but it was, uh, if you know one language, um, you're going to think it's perfect and fanatically defend it and be like, this is it. If you know more than one language, you think they're all dumb. <laughs> I think the same thing happens with paradigms, too. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, this is really great for this, and this is really great for that. Mm -hmm. um, but if you know more than one, you can, you know, you're obviously going to be a better programmer in general, and you can kind of, you have more tools. Absolutely. So, uh, JavaScript, where, what do you think is really cool in that right now? I think, uh, all right, well, everybody's on the MVC framework thing. Sure. Um, but I uh, like, you know, Coco and um, I guess Swing, and the Android, iOS, uh, whatever. Every UI framework mm -hmm. ever out there on OSs uses components. The Flash does. Mm -hmm. And when we get to the web, we're not using components. We're right. like, let's do it differently. So I'm really interested in uh, Polymer. That got me super excited. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this could be like every other thing. I'm also excited about the experiments going on, mm -hmm. like with data bindings and stuff. They're like, let's try different ways of doing this. Let's not just do what everybody's always done for front end UIs. Absolutely. So that's really exciting stuff, the experimentation. So if someone wants to get into functional programming, uh, whatever language they're using, or I guess most languages, sure. what would you suggest as a way to get over um, that area? If I, I personally, there's a few different types and flavors of functional programming, mm -hmm. and Clojure is a great 
meta dynamic exciting um, way to do functional programming and on the total other end is Haskell um, mm -hmm. I would say or Agda or something insane um, where you're just very rigidly typed and everything's just correct and like super terse and pretty mm -hmm. and if you're gonna learn functional programming I suggest you learn a little bit of both okay so learn you a Haskell is my favorite book of all time okay um, it's online for free it's like L Y A H Okay. Anyway, and then uh, I guess, you know, any closure tutorial, I guess the joy of closure is pretty great. Sure. And yeah, so um, I would learn a little bit of each. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thank you.